You know Google Maps? They've captured some incredible images and sights around the world, but some discoveries are just downright chilling. Stay with me for a bit. We're investigating the creepiest things ever found on Google Maps. So Google Maps, it's become a critical tool for navigation, exploration, and finding hidden corners of the world from the comfort of your screen at home. First launched in 2005, Google Maps has completely changed how we navigate and explore the planet, offering satellite imagery, aerial views, and the popular street view feature. The idea behind Google Maps came from a Danish company called Where To Technologies, which was founded by Lars and Jens Elistrup Rasmussen in 2003. Their company created a mapping program that, unlike traditional map systems, could offer a seamless user-friendly web interface. Google acquired Where To in 2004, and at first the product was released only for desktop use and required a large amount of processing power to display accurately. Soon after, though, Google Maps became available on mobile devices, and with the integration of satellite imagery after the acquisition of Keyhole Incorporated, which was the company that specializes in geospatial data visualizations and GPS capability, Google Maps was able to develop into a much more user-friendly resource. Now, at its core, it works by piecing together vast amounts of data from a different number of sources, including satellite images, high-definition aerial photography, and information from local governments and geographic information systems around the world. They also rely heavily on data that's been collected from users' devices, helping update traffic conditions in real time. For example, when several users' phones show slow movement on a road, Google can infer that there's a traffic jam and update accordingly. The app even crowdsources data for places like popular restaurants or businesses, updating the information as users suggest edits to details like the hours, reviews, or even photos. Now, Street View, which has become one of Google Maps' most revolutionary features, launched in 2007 and allows users to virtually explore locations at street level. Google equipped cars with 360-degree cameras and drove them across cities across the world, capturing panoramic views of streets and landmarks. Over time, Google expanded this to more remote locations by developing Trekker units, which are camera backpacks worn by adventurers to capture hard-to-reach places. Today, anyone can contribute to Street View by uploading 360-degree photos, which means it now covers just about everywhere that people can reach. Along with the way that it's changed navigation, Google Maps has also become a tool for curiosity, mystery, and even a little weirdness. The platform has unintentionally documented a range of strange and bizarre sights from around the world, from natural formations to man-made anomalies, or simply bizarre images that users have stumbled upon. Researchers have also been able to use the platform to discover ancient structures and settlements, sometimes discovering the ruins in deserts or isolated regions where ground-level exploration would be impossible. There are countless hidden gems on Google Maps for anyone to find, and the ability to wander digitally through different countries and landscapes makes it a fun resource for armchair explorers and adventure seekers. But before you open it up and go searching for exciting things yourself, it's time to take a look at some of the creepiest things that others have found and find out what they really are and why they looked at the way they do. Let's head to Iraq, the Blood Lake. It's a strange phenomenon that's visible in satellite imagery and located near the city of Sadir in Iraq. It was first discovered on Google Maps in 2007. Since then, there have been a lot of theories about why it looks how it does, but to this day, there hasn't been a comprehensive explanation. Images of the Blood Lake show a body of water that's a vivid, almost unnatural red color, and it's surrounded by the dry and neutral-toned landscape that's typical of Iraq. This coloration is so bold that it appears almost digitally altered, leading many to think that the lake's color was edited or manipulated. The raw satellite images prove that it is real, but even Google was unable to give a specific explanation for it. One of the leading theories involves pollution, specifically industrial or human waste from nearby industrial facilities. It is possible, for example, that abattoirs could have been dumping large quantities of waste products into the lake, and this would make sense, as many of the structures in the area are agricultural ones and have very limited waste management infrastructure. Another suggestion, though, is that the coloration is the result of a natural process rather than a human one. Certain types of algae and bacteria can cause water to turn red when they're present in large quantities. These microorganisms thrive in salty environments, so if the lake water had high salinity levels, this could support red algae blooms. Red lakes formed in this way have been around in other parts of the world, such as the Red Salt Flats in Bolivia or Lake Retba in Senegal, where algae has caused dramatic color changes. 
However, the Blood Lake in Iraq seems to be different from these, because it's not thought to have the salt levels that are required for that process to happen. In recent years, the lake has returned to a more usual color, which further suggests that the cause was a temporary or seasonal phenomenon rather than something that's permanent. It is likely, then, that it's a combination of factors such as occasional dumping, seasonal bacterial growth, or runoff conditions. Let's head over to Italy for the Pink Bunny, known as Hessa. It was a massive, hand-knitted pink rabbit that was placed on the Coletto Fava Mountain in northern Italy's Piedmont region. It was an installation that sprawled across the mountainside and measured about 200 feet or 61 meters long and 20 feet or 6 meters high, meaning it was easily viewable on Google Maps. Created by Australian art collective Gelatin in 2005, the bunny was designed as part of an outdoor art project that was meant to encourage surprise and a hint of humor, with its creators wanting it to look as though it had fallen from the sky and was lying helplessly on the mountain. It was made with some amazing attention to detail, using thousands of pounds of soft pink fabric that was stuffed with straw. Its open mouth, wide eyes, and limbs spread out in various directions gave the impression of a creature in a cartoonish slump. From a distance, the bunny looked like an enormous toy that had been abandoned on the mountainside, and it was purposely placed along popular hiking trails so hikers would come across it by surprise, providing a sense of discovery. Gelatin designed the sculpture for visitors to climb on, touch, and even sleep on if they wanted to, and the bunny's fabric surface meant that it was comfortable to the touch. This interaction added a dimension to the artwork that went beyond traditional art exhibitions or sculptures, making it a unique piece. Its visibility on Google Earth then made it accessible to people who weren't able to travel there, but its placement on the mountain meant that it was vulnerable to extreme weather. This meant that the bunny began to decay over time, and by the mid-2010s, the once bright pink figure had begun to decompose and was turning gray. While it now no longer exists in its original form, its presence on Google Earth and the images that were shared means that it lives on forever online, which is a fact that represents the permanence of everything in our technological world. All right, moving over to Arizona in the United States for the Airplane Graveyard, also known as the Boneyard. It's a creepy site where thousands of decommissioned military and civilian aircraft are left. Officially called the 309th Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Group, it's located at Davis Monathan Air Force Base in Tucson, Arizona. The choice of Tucson as the location for the Boneyard was purposeful, as Arizona's dry climate with its low humidity and little rainfall provides an ideal environment to store metal structures for long periods. The ground is also naturally hard and compact, making it easy to park and store aircraft. This climate advantage ensures that the aircraft, many of which could be called back into service or used for parts, can remain in good condition over the years. With some of the planes being preserved for potential future use and others being slowly dismantled for parts. The site's also home to various types of aircraft, including fighter jets, bombers, cargo planes, helicopters, and passenger jets. Some are well preserved and could theoretically be flown again, while others show visible signs of age and wear, with rust, faded paint, and missing parts. The Boneyard holds everything from historical models like B-52 Stratofortresses to more recent additions like the F-15 Strike Eagle and even unmanned aerial vehicles. This mix of old and new creates a strange landscape of aviation history. The graveyards are restricted and managed by the U.S. government and only limited tours are available by the nearby Prima Air and Space Museum. Tours take visitors around the perimeter of the Boneyard, and it is, though, fully viewable on Google Maps, and that allows enthusiasts from around the world to look closer at what's there and try to make a fascinating discovery of their own. All right, we're headed to China for the Desert Target Range. It's located in the Gobi Desert. It's one of the more bizarre things that was unknown to the outside world until it was discovered by chance on satellite imagery. This remote area, often called the Chinese Desert Pattern, or simply the Target Range, is made up of a series of massive, unusual shapes that are carved into the landscape. These geometric patterns, such as grids, circles, and giant target-like formations, are thought to be military testing sites. The most notable parts include large-scale white lines that form massive grids, circular shapes stretching across miles of barren desert, too, and some formations appear as rectangular grids or stripes, while others are more intricate, looking more like targets or abstract art. One peculiar formation is the near-perfect circle with radiating lines, which seems like the type of target that's used in missile testing. Another one is a large white rectangular grid with thick lines that form a crisscross pattern. 
One of the leading theories is that these patterns are used as target practice for Chinese missiles or aerial bombing exercises and help with calibration and accuracy testing. The circular target patterns in particular are similar to the types of targets used in military training for precision-guided munitions, and some formations even seem to replicate the layouts of major cities. The regular high-contrast patterns would make for ideal calibration markers, allowing China to improve their accuracy. Satellite calibration markers have been used by other countries too, and now that China is a global leader in satellite tech, it would make sense that they would need something like this. Chinese authorities have so far not officially disclosed their purpose though, and as it's in one of the most isolated regions of China, it's impossible for independent researchers or analysts to directly investigate to conclusively answer this question. Moving over to Kazakhstan for the giant pentagram, it's another strange thing that was discovered on Google Earth with the massive five-pointed star being etched into an isolated part of northern Kazakhstan on the edge of a large reservoir. Measuring over 1,200 feet or 366 meters in diameter, its distinctive shape, which is often associated with mysticism and occult symbols, has led to speculation about its origins. One of the first ideas that was put forward was that it could be part of a ritualistic site. The pentagram has been long associated with occult practices, and it's said to have protective or supernatural properties. This has then led on to stories of ancient rituals, secret societies, or even paranormal activities taking place here. Recent studies instead suggest that the pentagram may have been part of a Soviet park or campground. According to local historians, the design is thought to have been constructed during the Soviet period, when star shapes were commonly used in iconography, representing power. It is possible that the pentagram was meant as a park layout or recreational space, and that the star symbol simply reflects the Soviet Union's use of the shape as an emblem. This is supported by the fact that there are other Soviet relics in Kazakhstan, which as part of the USSR until its dissolution in 1991. The area, though, has since become overgrown, and the pathways have blended in with the natural landscape, giving this structure a more mysterious appearance. People who have visited it say that while the design is visible from the air, on the ground, it just seems like a set of trails and clearings at ground level. Now we're on to Finland and the Scarecrow Cult. It's actually a strange and creepy art installation that's officially called The Silent People, located along Highway 5 near Suomosalmi, which is a small village in northern Finland. It was created by artist Rachel Kela in 1988, and it's made up of over a thousand scarecrow-like figures, standing in a field as if frozen in time. These scarecrows were arranged in dense groups, with each one having a head that's made from peat and wearing colorful weathered clothes. The outfit vary in style and color, and they're donated by local residents and are changed each year by volunteers. Over time, the elements wear down the clothes, giving each figure a haunting, fading look, making them look more like ghosts than scarecrows. The figures are placed in rows that stretch out across an open field, with each one facing the highway. This gives the installation an intentional strangeness about it, as though the figures are watching over people who drive by. For those who stop and walk among them, the whole effect can be quite unpleasant, as when you pass between the rows of these scarecrows, you start to notice their empty faces and unseeing eyes. The artist's intent behind the silent people isn't entirely clear, and the installation means something slightly different to everyone who sees it. Now, more than 35 years after it was first installed, Silent People has a whole new audience because of technologies like Google Maps, and locally is a popular roadside attraction. While the scarecrows themselves are set in place, the atmosphere changes with the seasons, as the snow in winter covers them and the summer reveals their bright clothing. Let's go over to Japan with the Bat Signal. The Batman logo is probably one of the most recognizable images of all, so you can imagine people's surprise when they saw the one on Google Earth in the middle of Japan. In fact, what seemed to be a random installation was actually a purposeful choice, and it reflects the people who are stationed in the building, the U.S. Air Force's 44th Fighter Squadron at Kadena Air Force Base in Okinawa. Finding the huge emblem of the Dark Knight on a U.S. military installation was completely unexpected and was soon shared around the world with people wanting to know why it was there. The 44th Fighter Squadron are, though, also known as the Vampire Bats and have a long history and tradition of using bat-like symbols. The squadron flies F-15 fighter jets and has adopted the bat as its official creature, representing the unit's name and identity. The bat insignia is often displayed on the squadron's patches, equipment, and memorabilia, and it's likely that this inspired the squadron members to take it one step further by creating a massive bat symbol. 
The choice of Batman specifically adds a twist to the traditional Bat emblem though, while the squadron's nickname itself could have been enough to choose a Bat-themed logo, the use of Batman symbols suggests an alignment with the traits that we think of from the hero, like strength, resilience, and the relentless pursuit of justice. The sheer size of the logo painted in dark tones against the lighter coloration of the building's roof means it was intentionally designed to be seen from above, both from aircraft and, of course, satellite imagery. Moving over to the Sudan now for the giant human lips. While there are a number of natural formations around the world that just by coincidence look like something familiar, but one of the strangest and creepiest has to be the landform that can be seen on Google Maps in the Sudan. Found in the remote Darfur region of the country, there's no denying that it looks just like a pair of human lips, but it is actually a natural landscape that creates a visual illusion. The lips-like formation is about a half a mile or 800 meters across and is formed by a series of sand dunes, ridges, and valleys that have been shaped over time. The Sudan's dry climate, which experiences intense heat and little rainfall, helps to preserve landforms like this as the lack of vegetation allows the bare earth and sand to take on distinct patterns. The phenomenon when landforms or things take on forms of familiar shapes or patterns is called pareidolia, and it's the psychological tendency where people perceive familiar objects or figures in random places. The giant human lips in Sudan is one of the most bizarre examples of this, and shows how geological formations can produce shapes that are surprisingly familiar. While it is something that was only discovered in modern times, it's likely that the giant human lips have been there in the same way for thousands of years. The area around this formation is a vast and remote, and very few people live there, so it's possible no one has ever set foot anywhere close to it. Taking a look at the tank graveyard in Afghanistan, it's a strange wartime relic where hundreds of abandoned tanks, armored vehicles, and other military equipment are scattered and rusting in the desert. Found near the capital city Kabul, it's a sobering reminder of the decades of conflict that have troubled this country, from the Soviet invasion in the 1980s to wars in recent decades. The tanks, some of which are still recognizable, and others that have been partially dismantled or broken beyond repair, would have once had a major impact on the lives of the people in the region and the landscape itself. This graveyard contains remnants from most military campaigns from the past 50 years, with the most notable being the Soviet tanks, which were left behind after the Soviet Union's withdrawal in 1989. During their occupation, Soviet forces left a heavy footprint, deploying thousands of tanks and vehicles across the country. And when the Soviets withdrew, they abandoned most of their equipment, leaving tanks, trucks, helicopters, and other machinery to decay. As well as the Soviet ones, the tank graveyard also holds abandoned American and NATO vehicles. Following the US-led invasion in 2001 and the long-running military presence in Afghanistan, more modern equipment was then added to the graveyard. While most American and NATO forces removed their vehicles when they withdrew, damaged or irreparable machines were commonly left behind. And while most people in the world can't really directly visit this site, it is there in full view on Google Maps. Scrapping metal from the old tanks and selling it is a way for local Afghans to make a living, and families including children can often be seen searching for usable materials from the decaying armor and dismantling parts that can be sold as scrap. Still, the images of rusting tanks in the desert have become a visual symbol of Afghanistan's struggles, with some pictures almost looking like a post-apocalyptic vision, with rows of tanks lined up as if they're ready for battle. Seeing powerful military machines lying powerless against the forces of nature shows just how much of a waste that war is, and the way that eventually nature always reclaims even the toughest of human creations. Moving over to Honduras for the missing bridge of Choluteca. It's a weird thing to see when you first come across it on Google Maps, and one that shows that no matter how well a construction project is planned, there's no accounting for the natural world. The bridge was designed to withstand the extreme weather conditions that are common in the region, and completed in 1996 with help from Japanese engineering experts, it was built over the Choluteca River. But with the latest technology at the time, it was specifically designed to be able to cope with natural disasters, particularly hurricanes. But things took a strange turn in 1998 when Hurricane Mitch tore across the country. The storm was one of the most destructive ones to ever hit Central America and brought torrential rainfall that saw Honduras receiving nearly a year's worth of rain in just a few days. The resulting floods destroyed infrastructure, homes, and crops, but as expected, the Choluteca Bridge survived, even though most others were destroyed. 
What the designers of the bridge couldn't plan for, however, was the way that a hurricane would affect the landscape around the bridge. The Choloteca River became swollen with extreme rainfall and carved out a new path that completely bypassed the new bridge. The river shifted course by enough of a distance that it left the bridge standing over dry land with no river flowing beneath it. The image of a Choluteca bridge stranded over empty land soon went viral, and you really get a full sense of what happened when looking at it on Google Maps. It now represents how even the most advanced planning can fall short when circumstances change, and it's often a cautionary tale about the importance of flexibility. Headed to Mexico now for the black hole. Well, black holes are phenomena that are some of the most destructive forces known in the universe, but luckily for us, it doesn't seem like there are any near our own solar system. There was a moment, though, that when users of Google Maps became worried about what they were seeing, when a black hole was found in the Gulf of Mexico. When viewed on satellite images or Google Maps, this dark circular spot looks like a nearly perfect black circle against the blue of the gulf, making it look like an actual hole had opened up in the ocean. Well, the most likely explanation is that it's a result of the way satellite images are stitched together by mapping services. Google Maps, like many others, compiles images that are taken at different times and from various sources to create a seamless view of the Earth's surface. Inconsistencies between these images can, however, sometimes result in glitches, missing data, or unusual visual effects. In cases where data for certain areas might be unavailable or hard to process, the satellite image can display a blank, dark, or shaded area. Well, another possibility is that the black spot could be a shadow that was being cast by a cloud during image capture, or an error in the data processing system. If the satellites captured a particularly dense cloud or storm, it might appear black when layered over the ocean background, and digital image stitching processes can sometimes intensify shadows, creating an effect that, when viewed from above, looks almost like a void in the sea. Well, despite the technical explanations, the black hole has, of course, led to a number of other suggestions, as the possibility that it could be a secret underwater base, especially with the Gulf of Mexico's history with oil rigs and underwater structures. Others have said that it could be related to natural phenomena like ocean sinkholes, underwater volcanoes, or even deep-sea caverns. And while these ideas don't have any scientific proof to back them up, it shows how desperate people can be to explain things that they don't understand. The Gulf of Mexico is known for having various oil wells, underwater formations, and ecosystems, but a true black hole does not actually exist there. And this mystery almost certainly has a technical explanation rather than a geological or astrophysical one. All right, we're moving to Canada for the Badlands Guardian, which is near Medicine Hat in Alberta. It's another example of a geological formation that just so happens to look like something recognizable. From above, the natural landform appears to be as a human face, complete with facial features such as a nose, lips, and chin. Even stranger is that it appears to be wearing a headdress similar to that worn by the indigenous people of the region, which is why it's become known as the Badlands Guardian. It was definitely not deliberately carved by human hands, and instead is the result of natural erosion over thousands of years. The Guardian's features are made even clearer by the particular combination of light and shadow that casts over the landscape, making it stand out even more the higher you look at it from. Also strange is that it seems to be wearing a set of earphones. Now, this too is actually an illusion that's been created by an access road and an oil well, both of which just so happen to fit perfectly with the head and give the impression of modern headphones. Seeing such an ancient looking face with a modern headset has added a further twist to the image, with some describing it as the Native American listening to an iPod. Well, the discovery of the Badlands Guardian has, too, led to several interpretations and suggestions about its cultural and spiritual significance. Many see it as a powerful symbol, believing it reflects the spirit of the land and the deep connection indigenous peoples have with it. The resemblance to indigenous headdresses has led to a sense of respect for the Guardian, with some viewing it as a natural monument honoring the history and culture of the First Nations of Canada. While the formation itself is naturally occurring, it has become a symbol of indigenous pride, reminding people of the historical links of these communities to this area. Let's take a look at some shipwrecks in Mallows Bay, Maryland. So, Mallows Bay in Maryland is home to one of the largest collections of shipwrecks in the Western Hemisphere, and it's often called the Ghost Fleet of Mallows Bay. It's located along the Potomac River, and the bay contains over 230 sunken vessels, most of which date back to the First World War. These abandoned ships have created a very strange landscape with rusted hulls and the remains of boats emerging from the water. 
Now, the story of Mallow's Bay's ghost fleet began during World War I when the United States took on an ambitious shipbuilding program to deal with German U-boats. The U.S. government ordered hundreds of wooden steamships to support the war effort and keep essential supplies flowing to Europe. These ships were quickly built, though, and by the time most were finished, the war had already ended. This speed meant that many of the vessels were poorly constructed and were impractical for commercial use. So with no purpose and mounting maintenance costs, they were obsolete almost as soon as they were built. In the 1920s, the U.S. government decided to dispose of them, and they were sold to the Western Marine and Salvage Company, which planned to dismantle them for scrap. However, the process proved to be far more expensive than they had expected. Eventually, the salvage company abandoned the project, leaving hundreds of ships in Mallows Bay, where they were either scuttled or left to decay. Over time, the wooden and metal hulls settled into the bay's shallow waters, creating the ghost fleet that we see today. Nature has since taken over, and the ships have now become artificial reefs, hosting a rich ecosystem, with them now providing a habitat for a wide variety of life, including fish, crabs, oysters, even bald eagles. While it is amazing to see from the water, it's the views of the site from Google Maps that truly show the scale of the graveyard, has a powerful memory of the impact of war, even in those places that weren't directly involved. Headed to Egypt now for the lost city of Tanis, which is in the northeastern Nile Delta of Egypt. It was an important place during the Third Intermediate Period of Egypt, around 3,000 years ago, and became the capital for a series of pharaohs in the 21st and 22nd dynasties. The ancient city, which was once thriving with temples, palaces, and tombs, is now in ruins, of course, and one of the fascinating ways you can see it for yourself is on Google Maps. The city became a focal point of the Egyptian economy at the same time that Thebes and Memphis, two of Egypt's older capitals, were in a period of decline. Its location near the Mediterranean Sea made it an important center for trade and political power, and the rulers of Tanis, especially during the Third Intermediate Period, wanted to create a legacy in the same way as other ancient cities. They built massive temples dedicated to gods like Amun, Mut, and Khonsu. But most of the work in Tanis was done with recycled stone from earlier monuments. This reuse of materials meant that the structure began to degrade over time, as the stones from previous structures didn't have the same durability of brand new ones. Eventually, the residents abandoned the place in favor of the other more stable cities, and Tanis fell into disrepair. In modern times, it also proven to be particularly tricky for archaeologists to study. Because of its location in the Nile Delta, it makes it susceptible to seasonal flooding. This has actually meant that they've had to turn to satellite imagery to get an idea how big this city was, and the location of important structures that are still there. Because the resolution of the images that are captured and available on Google Maps are far better than what can be achieved at ground level. It's kind of an amazing example of how a service that was originally intended to help us navigate is now at a level where researchers are able to use it to learn far more about ancient civilizations. All right, let's go over to France. Orador sur glane is a small village in central France that was hugely impacted by the Second World War. On June 10, 1944, Nazis laid siege to the village and left it in ruins. Since then, it's remained abandoned and now as a ghost town. It's a window into the past that can be viewed on Google Maps. The German Das Reich Division had been stationed in southern France with the task of moving north to reinforce German positions following D-Day. Along their route, they encountered significant resistance from French troops who were supporting the Allied effort by disrupting German supply lines. The exact reasons why Orador sur Glane was targeted still aren't clear, and some historians think that Nazis may have mistakenly thought that the village was hiding resistance fighters or weapons. It's also possible that they confused Orador sur Glane with the nearby village of Orador sur Vare, where a German officer had supposedly been kidnapped by resistance fighters. Well, after the war, French President Charles de Gaulle decided that Orador Seglan would remain as it was left on that day. The remains of homes, businesses, and vehicles stand exactly as they were in 1944, making the village an open-air museum. Rusted cars sit in the streets, sewing machines lie on tables, and bicycles remain leaning against walls, frozen in time. Bullet holes, scorched walls, and remnants of everyday life create a strange sensation, and one that shows why it's so important that we must never let a war break out in the same way again. Today, the town is a place of pilgrimage for people wanting to understand the cost of war and to pay their respects to those that live there. From above and satellite imagery, it's like looking back at a typical 1940s French village. But the more you look, the more you can feel what an important place this truly is. And now we're going to head to the Bahamas to take a look at a sunken plain in the Crooked Island. 
Crooked Island is one of the lesser known islands in the country and it's in the southern part of the Bahamian archipelago. It is known for its beaches, clear blue water, and quietness. It's long appealed to those looking for a more remote escape. The discovery of the sunken plain has, though, added an air of mystery to this island, and it's in the shallows not far from the coast. Resting in about 10 to 15 feet of water, it's easily accessible to snorkelers and divers, but also visible to those above. The sunlight shimmers through the clear water and creates a haunting view of the aircraft's fuselage and other recognizable features. What's even more mysterious is that the exact history of how this plane ended up on the ocean floor near Crooked Island isn't fully known. While the model and serial numbers on some aircraft can provide clues, they can be difficult to access and verify underwater. Based on a visual examination, it's thought to be a smaller passenger plane, potentially from the 70s or 80s, but even this isn't clear. One theory is that the plane may have made an emergency landing because of mechanical issues or running out of fuel, which isn't that rare of a situation in remote regions like the Bahamas, where landing strips are few and far between. But one of the more popular theories, though, is that the aircraft may have been involved in smuggling, which was more common in the 1970s and 80s when illegal flights would try to evade law enforcement by flying low over the water to avoid being detected by radar. There is no evidence, though, to back this up, but there certainly were for a time a number of small planes in the Caribbean that carried mysterious cargo. Well, today the forgotten wreck has become an underwater attraction, with people traveling there to see the wreck, but also the marine life, too. This wreckage has now begun to turn into an artificial reef with coral and algae growing on its surface, meaning that eventually all the original parts of the aircraft will vanish, with just a plane shaped reef in its place. It is amazing that a place has found a new lease of life and the local tourist economy has benefited from something that was rediscovered on Google Maps. Google Maps has become a valuable tool for far more than its original creators could have ever imagined, and is now not just a way to find your way around, but to take a detailed look at the entire planet. From lost cities to mysterious aircraft, memorial sites, and hard-to-reach locations, you can truly now explore the world from your own home, even if it does at times involve traveling to extremely creepy places. Now, go and see if you can make the next big discovery. I'll see you next time. Thank you to our channel members.